OK, so now we're looking at subspaces. So we start off with the definition. We say that S is a subset of V, right? And S is a subset of V. True, that is a subset. If every element of S is also an element of V. Okay, so if everything in S is also in V, then S is a subset of V. For example, the set 1, 5, minus 2, 0, those two vectors, is a subset of R2, right? Because R2 is a set of all vectors, all two vectors. Okay. Have another definition. If V is a vector space and S is a non empty subset of V, we call S a subspace of V if it is closed under vector addition and closed under scalar multiplication. And there's a little note here saying non empty means that there must be at least one element in S. OK, so if you have a set S that's not empty, so not empty means not empty, it's not empty, it's not the empty set. If V is a vector space and S is a, is a, a non-empty subset of V, we call S a subspace of V if it's closed under vector addition and closed under scalar multiplication. OK, so you have a subset and it's closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication, then it's a subspace. Then there's a little note it's saying we use the same vector addition and scalar multiplication for S that we do for V. OK, because if you, you have this vector space V, and in that vector space V, there is a way of adding vectors to each other and multiplying them, multiplying them by scalars. You take a subset S, so just some of the elements of V, and you add them together in the same way that you'd add things in V. And if, whenever you do that, what you get is still some still a vector in S. And you say it's closed under vector addition. And if whenever you multiply by a scalar a vector in, in S, then you get another vector in S, then it's closed under scalar multiplication. So in other words, if if you or let's call it V rather. So if the vector if the vector V okay is in S Right, then certainly one thing is, that is true is that the vector alpha times v is in v, right? Because v v is in S, and S is a subset of S is a subset of the vector space v, and the vector space v is closed under scalar multiplication. But now we're saying not just that, but furthermore, this, this subset S is closed under scalar multiplication, so that alpha v is not just in v; it's in S. It's in that. So if V is in S, then alpha V must be in S. And in fact, alpha V must be in be V in S for every real number. So if V is in S and alpha is any real number, then alpha V must be in S. OK? Um, similarly, if U and V are vectors in S, then U plus V must be, must be in S. OK? Now it gives us going to give us an example. Presumably some examples of, of subspaces. It says consider the following subsets of R2 and decide whether or not they are subspaces. Okay, so let me try and do this without looking at the solution. That's always a good idea to do that. Oh, so for this S, this first S we have, the question is, if I take this is what? This is all those XYs that are where x plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. So that's like everything in a, it doesn't, ma doesn't matter if you know it really geometrically, but it's every, all the vectors that are within this circle of radius 1. So it's all the vectors that are, have a magnitude of actually of less than or equal to 1 in R2. Now, if you add two such vectors together, do you always get another vector of magnitude less than or equal to 1? No, of course not, because you could add, together, add a vector of magnitude 1 to itself, for example, or in fact, you could take any vector maybe with a magnitude of 1, and multiply it by a scalar that's bigger than 1, and then you'll have something with a magnitude bigger than 1, and it won't be there. So let's just test that. Let's just, so that's the outlines of a, of a, of a counterexample that shows that this thing is not a subspace. It's a subset of R2, but it's not a subspace. So we'd say, consider maybe the vector 1, 0. That's a nice, simple vector. Now, 1, 0 is in S, right? OK. But... 
if you take 1, 0 and multiply it by 2, so you have 2, 1, 0, then you get 2, 0, of course. Wait, how do I know that 1, 0 is an S? I know that 1, 0 is an S because if you go... Hmm, 1, 0 is an S. Why is it an S? It's an S because 1 squared plus 0 squared equals 1, which is less than or equal to 1. So it satisfies that condition. Now, I take it times by 2, so we get 2 times 1, 0. That's 2, 0. Then we have 2 squared plus 0 squared, which is equal to 4, which is not less than or equal to 1. Okay? So that means that this thing is not in S, okay? because 2 squared plus 0 equals 4, which is not less than, oop, which is not less than 1. So this thing, V is in S, alpha is in R, implies alpha V is in S, that we have found, we have shown that's not true by finding a case where we have a V that's in S, and RV was one zero, an alpha that's in R, our alpha was two, but the alpha times V, which was ended up being two zero, is not in S. So this thing is not closed in scale multiplication, so it's not a subspace. Let's just check to see that that's what they, they get. Yes, no, it's not closed, it's not closed, in fact, they have, it's not closed in vector addition or scale multiplication. Let's see, let's see why. Oh, they give an example of addition, right? So we found, we found that how it wasn't closed in scalar multiplication, they found how if you take, it's also not closed under vector addition. So the fact that it's not closed in scalar multiplication, that's enough to say it's not a vector space, because a vector, a subspace, sorry, because a subspace has got to have both. But it's also interesting to know that it's not, nor is it closed under vector addition. For example, you take the vectors what, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1. They're both in S, why? Because 1 squared plus 0 is equal to 1, which is less than or equal to 1. 0 plus 1 squared is equal to 1, which is less than or equal to 1. Add them together, you get 1, 1. That's not an S. Why? Because 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 2, which is not less than or equal to 1. Okay. Let's do this next one. We have the set S of all those vectors, x, y, such that x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. What x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. Is that a vector space? No, because you could... In fact, let me do something here. Let's check to see whether it's closed under vector addition. Okay. So, how do you check that? You say, let me take two vectors that are in this space. So, we'll take x, y, and I'll call the other one z, w, and then we'll say that both in s. Okay. So, that since they're both in s, that means the same thing as saying that x, y, z, and w are all greater than or equal to zero, right? Now, if I add them together, x, y, plus z, w, I get, how do you add together vectors now too? You add them component by component, you get that. Now, is that in S? Well, the question is, is x plus z greater than zero? And is y plus w greater than 0? Of course they are, because if x and z are both greater than 0, as is said over here, then x plus z has to be greater than 0. y plus z has to be greater than 0. y plus w has to be greater than 0. Yes, all these things individually, x is greater than 0, z is greater than 0, y is greater than 0, w is greater than 0, so when you add those things together there and there, the results are, the results are all greater than 0. So this thing, this set, it is indeed closed under, so this implies that. So, sorry, this, so this thing then is in elements of S, this sum, and because of, because of that, okay. So because X and Y, X, because those two factors being in S implies that their sum is in S, I'm going to rather put here the therefore sign for that. Just Okay. That means that this thing is closed under vector addition. Okay, so is it a, is it a subspace? 
We don't know yet because it's fine that it's closed under recognition, but it also needs to be closed under scalar multiplication. So let's check that. If you take, so we get, let's just try and prove it. You take xy in s, okay, and you take scalar, any scalar, right? Now, if xy is in s, that just means that x plus y is, oh, sorry, that means just, that means that x and y are both greater than or equal to zero, right? So you multiply this uh, vector by a scalar, by the scalar alpha, you get alpha x times alpha y. Now, is it true that alpha x plus alpha y is greater than or equal to zero? Is that the case? Mm, well, you can factorize the alpha if alpha x plus y is that greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. No, not necessarily. What if the alpha was negative? Then it would have something that's not greater than or equal to zero. So this is not true if alpha is if alpha is less than zero, and it can be because if alpha as a scalar, alpha could be any real number. Okay, so it's not true. That, that's it. So this is not an element of S. So this thing is not going to be closed under scalar multiplication. Now, a nicer way of showing that would be just to provide you know, uh, a counterexample. So you take a vector in S, so let's take a nice simple vector, let's take 1, 0 again. Okay? Now that's in S, of course. Why? Because 1 is greater than or equal to 0, and 0 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay? We multiply it by a, a nice simple negative scalar, what about minus 1? So we go minus 1 times 1, 0, that's minus 1, 0, and that is not in S, because minus 1 is not greater than or equal to 0. It doesn't matter that 0 is, because to be in S, you need both of these things to be the case. that. So we, is this it does what we found, that the, that the second example is not a subspace? Does that agree with what they say? Yeah, they say no, it's not. They say no, it's not a subspace because it's not closed under scalar multiplication. The example they give is like 3, 7 is in S because 3 and 7 are both greater than 0, equal to 0. But minus 1 and 3, 7 is not in S because minus 3 and minus 7, are, in fact, are both less than not less than zero, not greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So now there's a third example. This third example is the set, the subset S of all the xy's such that y equals three x. Okay. Let's see if this is a subspace. So we've got to check to see is it closed under vector addition? Is it closed under scalar multiplication? Okay. So we take an xy and a zw that are in s. And since they're in s, that means that y equals 3x. And also for, and for the second vector, it means the second component, the second component, w, is equal to 3 times the first component, which is z. Okay? Now we want to look at their sum, xy plus zw. That's x plus z, y plus w. Okay? Now, we need to check to see whether we have, do we have x plus z, do we have the first component, oh no, sorry, do we have the second component, which here, which is now y plus w, equal to 3 times the first component? Well, both sides of the, each side of that equation, you know, one side it's y plus w equals, and you can times it out, 3x plus 3z, right? But since y equals 3x, that left-hand side is, is, since y equals 3x and w equals 3z, that left-hand side does equal 3x plus 3z, right? So this thing, the sum is indeed in S, because y plus w does equal 3 times x plus z. That's ensured by the fact that y equals 3x and w equals 3z, which was what it meant for the two vectors we were adding together to be in S. Okay. 
so it in other words this thing is closed under this this uh sub 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 this subset s is closed under that tradition now you need to check that it's closed under scalar multiplication okay so we take a vector in S and a scalar. Okay, now since x, y is in S, that means that y equals 3x, right? So we know that y equals 3x. Now we multiply the vector by the scalar. It gives us this new vector like that, right? Now the question is, do we have alpha y equal to 3 times alpha x? Can we derive that from y equals 3x? Yes, of course you can, because that right-hand side, 3 times alpha x, is the same as alpha times 3x, right? But if y equals 3x, then alpha times y equals alpha times 3x. So this thing is in s. It's in s because of that. So this thing is closed. So this subset is closed under vector addition. It's closed under scalar multiplication. So it is a subspace because it meets the definition of what it means to be a subspace. Okay. What do they say? Yes, this is a subspace, as we as we said as well. To disprove a statement, it's enough to provide one example where it fails, like we did in the previous two examples. Okay. But to prove a statement, we need to make a generalized argument. We show below that S is closed under the addition of any two vectors and under multiplication of any vector with a scalar. So let's just look through there how they did it. U and V be elements of S and alpha B and R. So then U, and then V, where V equals. This is exactly what we did, right? Okay? To check whether it's still in S, you've got to check whether this is the case, whether U that equals that. So that's what they did. Add those two, same as adding those like that. But it's but u y equals three times u x because that's what it means for the u to be in s. Same for v x. So you get that. Okay. Then they say they left as the x size for the reader to prove that s is closed under scalar multiplication. Well, we already did that, so that's good. Okay. Now we have a theorem. Any vector space has at least two subspaces. The subspace consisting of just the zero vector and the subspace, it's the whole space itself. OK, well, V is certainly a subset of V, right? Because it's everything in V is in V, OK? It's a trivial subset. The set containing just the zero vector, that's also a subset of V. Why? Well, every vector space has got to have a zero vector in it. Okay. Why am I saying that? The, how do I know that every vector space is a zero vector? Well, one way of seeing it is that every vector space must be closed under scalar multiplication. So you have to. So you could multiply any vector by the zero by scalar zero, and you get the zero vector. Or another way of seeing it is to say that in any vector space you could take any vector in it and subtract from it the same vector, and that's, of course, going to be the zero vector. So zero, the zero vector is in every vector space. So this, uh, so the set containing just the zero vector is certainly a subset of V. OK? So these two things, V and the set containing just zero, the zero vector, those are both subsets of V. Now, to be subspaces, it's not enough to be subsets. They must be closed under that traditional scalar multiplication. So it must be that if you take anything here in V and you any two vectors and add them together, you get something else that's in V. But of course that's true because V is a vector space, right? Similarly, closed under scalar multiplication, well, that's just because V is a vector space. OK, so that's trivial. Now, if you take any two vectors in here, add them together, do you get something else in there? Yes, of course you do. Why? Because the zero vector plus the zero vector, those are the, zero is the only vector there, so you have to, zero plus zero is the only sum you can do. The zero vector plus the zero vector equals the zero vector. And 
and it's got a Clayton scaling multiplication where you do a scalar times a zero vector. What do you get? A scalar times a zero vector is just a zero vector. You get the zero vector. So this thing is closed under this thing is closed under that tradition and under scalar multiplication. And I think I'm going to carry on with this part about thing about subspaces in another video because it goes on for a while. Okay.